Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 10.1, Exponents. Today for our essential question, I would like you to practice your AVID skills and write one on your own after you're done watching today's lesson. Today you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 10.1, a pen or a pencil, a calculator. We will use that for some calculations, but we will not be using the exponent function on our calculators your bright ideas, some creativity, and always bring your problem solving skills. Let's begin with some exponent vocabulary. So what we have right here is B to the E power, and we're going to break it down into the different components. B is our base of the power, and it's the common factor. So it's the thing that we're going to be multiplying out. E is our exponent and it indicates the number of times that the base is used as a factor. And together, this is power is a product of the repeated factor. So we're going to examine patterns to make exponents. So first we have to realize that negative three, that's our base. So this is the number we're going to be using repeatedly as our factor. So this is saying negative three, and you're going to multiply it just one time. And so negative three, just one time, that would have a value of negative three. And so for the next one, this is saying we're going to use negative three as a factor two times. So negative three times negative three is nine. And so be careful because we are going to have positive and negative answers because a negative times a negative is positive. So this is now saying take the factor of negative three and multiply it by itself three times. And so we have negative three times negative three times negative three. Well, that just means the first two were nine. So nine times negative three is a negative 27. And so notice here we have those negatives and positives popping up because a negative times a negative is positive, the positive nine, and positive times a negative is negative. So now we have negative three times itself four times. So use the factor negative three four different times. So negative three times negative three was nine. Positive nine times negative three was a negative 27. Negative 27 times a negative three is going to be a positive 81. So we need to be careful with our positives and our negatives. So the next three we'll run through pretty quickly now. Negative three, Multiply it out five times. So we know the first four is a positive 81. So positive 81 times negative three is a negative 243. Notice we're going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. We have the factor of negative three six times. So the first five we know is a negative 243. So negative 243 times a negative three. Negative times a negative is positive. So it's a positive 729 and negative three to the power of seven. So we have seven negative threes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So positive 729 times a negative three. So we know our answer is negative. It's a negative 2,187. So we now know that when we have a negative number, some interesting things happen. This is only when our base is negative. When our base is positive, we don't have to worry about this because a positive times a positive is always positive. But when the base is negative, we do need to be careful. So what happens when the base is negative? So when n is even, so let's go look at the evens. So when it was two, we had a positive nine. When it was four, we had a positive 81. When it was six, we had a positive 729. So the product is always going to be positive. But when n is odd, let's look at those ones. When it was one, it was a negative three. When it was three, it was negative 27. When it was five, it was negative 243. And when it was seven, it was negative 2,187. The product is always negative, And that makes sense because Let's take um, this one right here. So these two negatives right here are positive. And so you end up with a positive times a negative, which is negative. 
And so if you just remember that you're going to be taking them and you have to multiply them out little bits by little bits, you would eventually get down to a positive times a negative at your last step. So now let's look at these three problems and write each product using exponents. So our base on the first one is a four. So we know that it's going to be a base of four and then we're going to raise it to the one, two, three, four, fifth power. So now let's look at the next one. The next one's a little more in depth because we have two different bases. We have a base of negative two and we have a base of X. So we have to take each of those in turn. So our base of negative two, we have one, two of those. So we're going to have negative two squared. Make sure that your negative two is in parentheses. If it wasn't in parentheses, we'd be doing something else. And then we have our X's. We have one, two, three, four X's. So a base of X and then to the fourth power. I know in the last one, we have a base of one fourth. So we have the base of one fourth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And so we have one fourth to the seven. Now make sure that you put that one fourth into parentheses. If you don't, and you just put one to the seventh, just put the seventh out there. Really what you're saying is you're raising your one to the seventh power and not the four. And so you have this funny looking one to the seventh, which would be one, 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 all across the top, and then just to the fourth on the bottom. So now that we understand what exponents are and how they work, we're going to actually evaluate each expression. So remember, that means you are going to simplify. So now we have negative four to the third power. So what we're doing is we're taking that negative four and we're going to multiply it out three different times. So the factor is going to be used three times. So we have negative four times negative four times negative four. So the first two negative fours is 16. Negative four times negative four is 16. And then we're going to do 16 times negative four, which is 64, but a positive times a negative is neg negative. And so our answer is negative 64. Okay, so now let's look at this one. This is negative four to the fourth power. That's great. Now let's look at another one that looks very similar to that. This is also negative four to the fourth power. Really, it's how you say it almost sounds exactly the same. You have to actually be able to look at it to really understand. So how is parentheses negative four to the fourth different from negative four to the fourth? It is all about where those parentheses are and where they aren't. This is really saying negative four to the fourth power. It's negative four to the fourth power. We're taking that base of negative four and we're taking it to the fourth power. Where the other one is saying, this is the opposite of four to the fourth power. So you took four to the fourth power and then took the opposite of it. They're very small differences, but the answers are going to be very different. So if you remember that when you don't have parentheses, it's the opposite of, you're more likely to be successful. So now that we understand that those are different, let's go ahead and do the problems. So again, this one's saying, take your negative to the four. This one is saying, take negative four and raise it to the fourth power. So there, we did it. And now let's go ahead and do the problems. I went ahead and because it's multiplication, I can do it in any order I want. I did negative four times negative four and negative four times negative four to get 16 times 16. And then my 16 times 16 is 256. Now this one over here, this remember is saying something different. This is saying do your four to the fourth power. So I raised my four to the fourth power by going four times four times four times four. And then after I do this, I'm going to take the opposite of it. So again, four times four is 16 and four times four is 16. So now I am going to take the opposite of 16 times 16. And we already know 16 times 16 is 256. So the opposite of positive 256 is negative 256. And so you can see our answers are different. 
In this one, our answer was positive 256. And in this one, our answer is negative 256. So we really have to pay attention to, did it have parentheses or did it not have parentheses? And when it does have parentheses, a negative times a negative is positive, and so this becomes a positive answer. When it did not have parentheses, it actually took the opposite of it, and it ended up being a negative answer. So pay attention to that, because it is going to be a place that's going to usually trick people. So now that we understand how exponents work, let's go ahead and put them into a problem where order of operations matters. So now we have 2 minus 4 times that 5 squared. So order of operations says I need to do my exponents first. So I did, and 5 squared is 25. So now I just worry about order of operations. So I need to do my 4 times my 25, and I get 100, and then 2 minus 100 is a negative 98. And so when I'm doing these problems, if I need to use a calculator, that's going to be okay to use them on everything except for the exponents. I really want you guys to get used to doing the exponents um, out by hand right now and just do each portion if you need to with a calculator. But you still need to show each step as you complete it. So by saying you don't get to say, oh, I just did on the calculator. You can't say that. You do need to show each step completed. So now let's look at the next one. This is 5 plus 6 squared divided by 4. So the first thing I have to do is my exponent. So I'm going to do 6 squared, and I'm going to write out then everything else that I did not touch. So I didn't change the 5, so it says 5 plus. I changed my 6 squared, so that becomes the 36, and then divided by 4. Order of operations says I'm going to do the division next. So that means I'm going to do my 36 divided by 4, and 36 divided by 4 is 9, and now 5 plus 9 is 14. So now I'd like you guys to try this last one. So now that you've tried it, you have 12 minus 3 cubed plus 4. Order of operations says do this 3 cubed. Don't worry about this negative out here right now. It'll take care of itself. So 12 minus 3 cubed well, 3 cubed is 27. See how we don't, it didn't matter. It kind of took care of itself. So 12 minus 27 plus 4. So now order of operations, there's no multiplication or division to worry about. It says do addition and subtraction left to right as you find it. So 12 minus 27 is a negative 15. And negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. So when you're looking at all of these problems, it's really important to keep in mind that you show each step. So you only get to do one thing at a time. And then as you do that one thing, you then write everything down, including the stuff that did not change. And then you go to the next step. One really important thing to keep in mind is masking. If for some reason you're getting really overwhelmed and you feel like there's too much going on on your page, what you can do is you can cover up the previous lines that you've already done so that you can only see the lines that you're working on. It's a really good technique to use when there's so much going on in one problem. It's easy to use. You just take a piece of paper and you cover up the, the part of the problems that you've already done. So that's the introduction to exponents. Once we understand how to do exponents really well, it opens up a whole new world of types of problems that we can do. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to explain to someone the difference between negative a to the fourth and negative eight to the fourth. And will there be a difference between negative eight to the third and negative eight to the third? What do you think? Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.